Look guys, what we're about to share is really embarrassing. You see, these mistakes that we've made has caused our credit to get rejected. It's actually decreased our credit score. We've had important mail shredded and it's caused additional delays on receiving our mail. This is our RV mail and domicile nightmare. Why do banks hate RVers? They do. Welcome back to the RV Odd Couple. My name is John. And I'm Mercedes. And long story short, we are V in pursuit of freedom, independence, and adventure. Because life is so short, you guys. It really is. And we have a lot to cover here. We're not attorneys. We're not CPAs. We're just going to share with you our experience, what we wish we had known. Two and a half years ago when we set out RVing and we picked our domicile. So let's start with what is a domicile and why does a full-time RVer need it? You see, a domicile isn't necessarily your mailing address and it isn't necessarily the address where you reside. It's your legal address. For example, it's the address on your license. It's the address on your tax returns. It's what you use for your voter registration. This is super, super important and we messed up big time. Your domicile impacts everything. It impacts your health insurance. It impacts whether or not banks will extend credit to you. You see, banks don't exactly want to lend money to someone that's nomadic because if you don't pay, they want to be able to find you, right? right. And so banks do not like our viewers. They really, really don't. So when we decided to go full time, we did a little bit of research, not enough, a little bit of research into domicile. You see, we learned that figuring out the best state to domicile really depends on your individual needs. Because for example, if you receive retirement income, you're not going to want to domicile in a state that will tax your retirement income or your pension income, right? Another big thing is, do you have to file personal taxes in that state? But other considerations that people sometimes don't give enough time to is how much does it cost to register and insure your vehicle in that specific state? And another thing that you need to consider that a lot of people forget is, does the state require you to have a physical presence in said state in order to claim it as your domicile? These are all really great points that we never fully considered when we set out. We listened to an RV YouTube channel that said, I use this, so we went ahead and used that. All of these things that Mercedes raises are really, really big decisions. And so you should really take your time and dig into what state is going to work the best for you and your family. Exactly, because what works best for us may not work best for you. And so in our case, we chose Florida because A, we were already residents of Florida. <laughs> Yep. And Florida is really expensive to register your vehicles. So we didn't want to pay to register our vehicles again in right. another state. Also, Florida does not have personal income taxes. So actually of the top three states to domicile for our viewers, it's Florida, it's Texas, and it's South Dakota. Another good state to domicile in is also Nevada and Arizona. Yeah, those are like second runner ups. Tennessee is looking pretty good yep. too. And it, it all has to do with like whether they tax your retirement income and what they expect of you. So what works best for us may not work for you. You really got to dig in and think about health insurance, retirement income. We had a corporation uh, that we ran out of Florida. And so all that was just easier for us to do. We were already registered to vote. We had already owned a home there. It was just a lot easier for us to use Florida. Exactly. Okay. So now that we've described like what domicile is, we still need to tackle a huge question, which is how do full-time RVers get mail? And see, the answer to this is a commercial mail receiving agency. You have to sign a form, get it notarized, give them permission to receive, open, and even scan your mail items. And they will do this as well as forward mail to you for a nominal fee. We assume that all commercial mail receiving agencies would be the same and they're not. they're not. And I know a lot of you might be thinking, well, I don't need to like pay someone to get my mail. I'll just use a family member's address. And that's a good consideration, but you may not want to do that. Like if you get a lot of mail, you are going to burden your family with your mail. You also have to really trust that family member to receive your mail. You may not want them to be getting your bank statements. Right. We decided on Traveling Mailbox because they include a boatload of scans with the monthly payment. Their headquarters are in North Carolina, but they have almost 50 addresses all over the U.S. that you can use for mailing purposes. Which seems easy on the front end, but not so fast. 
And to be clear, this is not Traveling Mailbox's fault because they never said that I could use the vanity address as my domicile address. I assumed that because it was such a pretty address that it would work. It looks like a normal address. And so this mistake is on me. What ended up happening was that this address was not accepted by banks. So when I would try to do stuff with this address, like, I don't know, refinance an auto loan, all of a sudden I couldn't do that because they didn't like the address. I was essentially homeless in the eyes of the bank. Yeah, the bank wants a physical address so that if you default, they know where to find you. And the irony with this pretty address that I really thought was such a good idea to pay extra for, right? Is that it actually ended up delaying my mail. You see, everything is scanned and processed in North Carolina. I was having things shipped to my Florida vanity address and then I was paying an additional fee to have it shipped to North Carolina, which incurred about a three business day delay on receiving my mail. And a little bit more money. What ended up happening was that I paid twice the shipping because first I had to pay to get it shipped from Miami to the headquarters in North Carolina. And then I had to pay extra to have it shipped from North Carolina to wherever I was at. Yeah, so those of you RV Odd Squad members that sent something, a present for Sage, to our mailing address, our vanity mailing address in Miami, we actually had to spend about 12 to $15 to have that sent to where we were. Speaking of people that have sent us stuff, is that in the beginning, we didn't have RV Odd Couple as a recipient. So mail originally sent to RV Odd Couple was getting immediately shredded. Right. This meant that we were missing mail from RV Odd Squad members that brings my blood to a boil. Right. The other piece that's tricky is that, you know, they've grown so much, the company's doing really good, but they don't have enough time for like the little details in the care. So for example, if we get a package mailed to us, if it's incomplete at all, they will not take the 10 seconds to like type up to in the computer out who we are. and find us. They'll shred it. And this caused us to almost have our RV insurance dropped. <laughs> and you know, we're like really big on RV insurance and we're always talking about Marty and Charlotte insurance. And we almost lost our RV insurance. Thank having... God we had Marty who called us and said, guys, you're going to be canceled. Yeah, like, oh. We said, well, we didn't get a notice. It's yeah. because they had put 500 and it's supposed to be dash, what is it? 9742. 9742. Well, they missed the 9742. So rather than to do the homework and find out which we were, they just shredded it. Yes. And so all of our insurance mail was getting shredded. We weren't receiving any of it. And this was causing major problems. And this is really frustrating because there were times where I did get the wrong mail scanned to me. I was getting mail from them that I should not have been receiving. We shouldn't be seeing that stuff. And and you got to wonder, it goes both ways, right? If I'm getting someone else's mail, that means someone else is probably getting my mail as well. This is a big problem. This is a huge problem. The other piece that's tricky, like I understand that this is a company that needs to make a profit, but when I pay to have my items shipped to me, I'm gonna pay more based on the size and the weight of the box. I don't want them to use the biggest box available because I'm paying extra for the size, right? right? And there was one time where they just picked the biggest box that they could. It made us so mad and it was just like half the size. Yeah, it was a deck of cards in this box that was half the size of my truck. <laughs> that might be a slight little, exaggeration. Little bit embellishment, but it was just absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> now you might be thinking, well, just find someone else to forward your mail to and then you'll fix the problem, right? Well, it's actually not that easy. Mm -hmm. We got a notice from the United States Postal Service saying, hey, once you get us to forward your mail here, you're going to have to talk to them to get them to forward your mail elsewhere. Right. Which is a little scary because after doing this video, I mean, I've tried to talk to the owner multiple times. Yeah, we've reached out to them, guys. And a lot of you, because of us, have signed up for their service. And you'd think they know who we are because we get, we get little checks every single month as an affiliate of theirs. They won't even talk to us on the phone. And this is what's tricky because I do feel really guilty for the fact that I'm like, this is who I use and they're great. Well, they were great at three months. They right. were great at three months. It's just the changes have slowly been like charging for this or that a dollar per mail item that's held after 30 days. And if you don't do that, it just gets all shredded. They've shredded really important things that like 
we really didn't want them to shred. We would have paid the dollar to have it not shredded because right. it costs us so much more. The devil's always in the details, guys. And with yeah. all these plans, all these companies, it's in the details. It's about marketing. That, that What we think is it's just about marketing. Mm -hmm. It's the way they present it. But Mercedes and I have spent triple what we thought we were going to spend when we set up our mailbox with this company. And I really thought we were gonna save money because they included like 100 scans and 100 envelopes, but it's kind of deceiving because you only really need a boatload of scans like the first one or two months right. because you're gonna require less and less scans as you slowly transition to e-banking. So you really don't need 80 scans for the rest of your mm -hmm. life, you know? And I wanted to save money because other services will charge 50 cents to a dollar per page that's scanned. So I thought I was saving money when in reality, I'm paying for scans that I'm never gonna use. A lot more money. And speaking of, you know, they should know who we are. I've actually had to use the, hey, we have a YouTube channel with over 100,000 subscribers. I need you to call someone at the Miami office and make sure they got this thing because it's a ginormous check that FedEx says you received, but I'm not seeing it in the scan. That's when I learned that there's like a three day delay. I was gonna have to wait three days to see if they had received this cashier's check or not. If I'm having to pull the YouTube card to get, get this attention. done, that means that if you don't have a YouTube channel, how are they gonna treat you? So what's the solution? The solution that we found for our situation is My RV Mail. What My RV Mail does that's different than other companies is that they'll actually help you establish domicile because domicile takes time. Domicile is a relationship with that town, with that community that you're creating. One of the nice things about Crestview, Florida, where my RV mail is located, is that there's a lot of military in that area. So they're very RV friendly in that county because they kind of treat RVers like they would the military in that you don't necessarily have to be there for a long time to establish your residency. Their prices are super reasonable. They do include scans depending on which tiered program you get. There's different tiers depending on your needs. And they have common sense. So like if you're getting a whole bunch of packages, I mean, they don't charge you per month that your mail the is storage. There. We were getting paid storage fees because, you know, they were holding mail more than 30 days and we never even knew we had the mail. So guys, we've been going through this brain damage for a year. We really didn't want to change mail service because it's a big deal. It's, All of yeah. our mail goes to one place. I'm, unfortunately, we found out 15 different places it can go to before it actually gets to where it needs to be. But for six months, Mercedes and I just dove in. We went down the rabbit hole and looked for who has the best service. We ended up finding My RV Mail, which is actually part of the Passport America family. This is a great small mom and pop company that really looks to take care of their customers. Well, and they're an RVing family. Right. I mean, the whole family's in the RV business, so they get the RVer, you know, because I'm kind of tired of giving my money to non-RVers. Yeah, was, and so am I. <laughs> and they <laughs> actually went and they installed three spots in the back of the buildings. It's going to help RVers go there, spend a couple of days, get your voting set up, get your driver's license, do everything you need to do to make the transition a little bit more seamless. We've also been using the service for about six months, guys, yeah. because we never, ever want to do a product that we don't believe in. Yeah. So we've been having two addresses and slowly moving our stuff from the old address to my RV mail. And it's gone off without a glitch. And we're saving about 60% more than we were by using, what's the name of those jerks? Traveling Mailbox. Traveling Mailbox, man. I cannot believe that that company would not at least talk to us on the phone. And we tried multiple emails. Hey, just have a phone conversation. We tried everything we could to make this, this relationship work with them. And the truth is, it doesn't seem like they want it to work. Yeah. If you, oh. <laughs> That's funny. Like, oops. Oh, that's really funny. So if you didn't just see, that's Worth. He's the guy that is um, representing his mom to sell this property. So the deal we've been able to put together for the RV Odd Squad and Kurt, his family, and my RV mail is that RV Odd Squad members will receive two months free if they sign up for a year. And they're also going to get another 10% if you're a Passport America customer. If you don't have a Passport America, what's and wrong with what's you? What's wrong with you? So <laughs> you should have it, especially if you're an RV Odd Squad member. We yeah. love Passport America. We love the family, and we've actually met Kirk, you know, because of this relationship. And so we're super confident and excited 
that you guys will love this service just as much as we have had. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this is a hard video to do because I do feel embarrassed. I've been getting some emails saying, hey, traveling mailbox doesn't work for domicile. What do I do? And the reality is I didn't know what to tell them because I didn't know how to solve my problem. Mm -hmm. The way that I solved my problem was through my RV mail by using their address. There was one institution that didn't like their address. Wells and what, Fargo. And what I did was I just used my mom's address, but I used them for mailing. So my mom isn't getting a boatload of my mail. That's what you're going to have to do is take the time to establish your residency. Don't assume that one company is going to just take care of all of it. It takes time to build that relationship. Yeah, and most companies don't really care about us guys. They don't care. They want to count the money. They'll sell, sell, sell on the front end. And when it comes to use the service, which is what Mercedes and I have done for two and a half years yeah. with, with that company. Now we know it was one of the biggest mistakes we've made since, you know, since we set out our being, it's so important to pick a company that's going to watch out for you. So, so important that you trust the company that's going through your mail and you don't have to send it to three or four different places before you get it. You know, a company that cares about not just taking a small uh, baseball and putting it in a big box because that ships for $20. Yeah, and you need a company that has some common sense so that if there's a name and part of a mailbox number, but maybe not all of the private mailbox number, that they take the time, the two seconds that it takes, to look up who this is and make sure that the mail's going in the right place. Yeah. We are so sorry that we led some of you went over and you signed up with, what's the name of the company? Traveling Mailbox. Traveling mail Mailbox. I hate even saying their name now. But if you signed up under us, we apologize. That's what we did. Mm -hmm. We listened to a YouTuber. We just can't fix it. And this is how we figured out why the system is so screwed up. Mm -hmm. And my RV mail is a much better solution and that will put our name on it. So our new address is Crestview, Florida. We love Kirk, we love his family, we love the company. They'll take the time once they know you're the customer to figure those problems out so that it, it's in your interest, not just theirs. Mm -hmm. One of the things that makes my RV mail different is that if you have a situation, you can actually pick up the phone and call them. So we had no choice but to change to a company that had integrity and we found that in my RV mail. From the bottom of my hearts, we're sorry if you followed us over to that company, it was a mistake. We're just letting you guys know and we're doing the best we can to make it right. We trust that my RV mail will take really good care of you. And if you forget the name, just go to rvoddsquadmail.com. We'll see you in the next video.